It may not look like much, but I promise you that this very small array of supplies is all that you need to get started in this hobby. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I discovered that there was a company, a hobby company, a big one too, that was making an all-in-one little box with tools and supplies to get started, specifically doing like foam craft, doing terrain, dungeon tiles. And I don't wanna give that product too much attention because something about it really didn't sit right with me. It was a very commendable idea. The kit was full of very low quality items. There were items in there that I think were good inclusions, but they were the cheapest of the cheap and the price didn't reflect that. This set was very expensive. It was like 90 euros for very little stuff. Like I looked at it, maybe $30 worth of stuff. And I know there's markup on things, but it just, ah, I, I hated the idea of new people buying that or maybe, you know, a well-intentioned family member buying it, someone, grandma for their kid, grandkids, I don't know. So I wanted to take this opportunity to put together what I think is the fundamental, most important things you need to start crafting terrain or miniature buildings, Christmas village, fairy gardens, whatever. This is all that you need. This is the stuff that I myself started with and used for a very long time to make a bunch of stuff. And even this, what I had when I started this channel, actually some of the stuff I didn't even have when I started this channel. And I think it's safe to say that start put me in a good, pretty good place. So it's, certainly all you need to get going. And it's gonna be enough to build stuff like this. And I have videos showing how you can make stuff like this using just this. I think it's very important to have these three different cutting tools. For knives, you wanna have a small X-Acto style knife. It does not need to be X-Acto brand, but this type of knife, personally, I have a variety of different brands and I buy off-brand blades in bulk because they're cheaper and you're gonna dull them anyway. So some sort of precision small cutting knife like this. These are really cheap. I've seen them at my Dollarama in Canada. You can get them there. You can get them on Amazon, very, very cheap. But you're also gonna want a bigger utility knife. And this is somewhere that I think you should spend a couple extra dollars. This style utility knife is far superior to any of the cheap off-brand ones that you can get. You can buy retractable utility knives for as cheap as like a dollar each. You can buy big packs on Amazon, buy 25 of them for under $20 usually. Like lots of companies make them, you can buy them at the dollar store and those cheap dollar store ones is what you get in that box I was talking about. Spend a couple dollars, get a good Ulfa knife, good Ulfa blades, they will last a lot longer. They're really ergonomic. The ratcheting feature is super important. And you know, realistically, if it's not Ulfa brand, if it's another brand that is comparable to this and has this kind of ratcheting locking mechanism, that's what you want. And you want blades that you can snap. This tool will unlock so much potential. It's all you really need. Hot wire tools, everything, they're great, but this is what you really need. This is number one. And do not discount scissors. Just a decent pair of scissors. Mine are definitely from the dollar store. A couple bucks, you probably have these sitting around in your junk drawer. Good pair of scissors is really handy for cutting all sorts of things like strips of paper for corrugation, cladding, whatever, cutting wood, you know, craft sticks. Really, really handy to have a good pair of scissors. When you're making cuts, you wanna be able to make straight cuts, especially if you're just using a blade. And I highly recommend that you get a metal ruler. Now you can just go to the dollar store again, get a cheap metal ruler, a school ruler, and that's fine. But this is another spot where it's worth spending $6 instead of one or whatever, and uh, get a small framing square, a carpenter square. This will give you a nice 90 degree corner to work with, which is great when laying out things like dungeon tiles without a hot wire cutter. My basic dungeon tiles, which are still the same ones I use today, were cut with this knife and a square like this. These carpenter squares are also a bit heavier so they don't move around as much and they're thicker, which makes it a little bit easier to make your cuts. It's also worth looking for ones that have both metric and imperial because both measuring systems are very useful in this hobby. There are certain scenarios where one is gonna work better than another. If you're making things for a game that's in a one inch grid system, you're gonna wanna have 
imperial measurement. And also there's a lot of things that work really well dividing into fractions, things like half an inch, quarter inch. It's really handy, but there's gonna be times when millimeters are more convenient and more practical. Get a ruler, a measure, metal ruler that has both systems on it. When you're cutting, you're gonna want a cutting mat. Now this is where you might wanna go out and spend a couple bucks and buy a big cutting mat like this. Cardboard is not really good enough uh, because you're gonna be transferring through it all the time. You're gonna be slicing through it. It's worth getting a proper cutting mat, specifically a self-healing one because they will last you many, 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 many years. This one here is one that I've had for five years and it's still good. They're also double-sided, so you can get a lot of life out of them. They will protect your table. They will protect your knife blades. They won't dull them as much. They're just really, really important. Uh, you want a cutting mat. Cutting mats are a little bit more expensive, although I've seen ones of this size packaged with a knife at Dollarama, again, here in Canada for like three or four bucks. So it's pretty good. Just start with a small one. You can absolutely just use a cheap kitchen cutting board. Yeah, just, you know, your standard cutting board. Again, dollar store, kitchen section, cutting board. It's not ideal, but it absolutely works. And I'm saying that from personal experience because that's literally what I started with. Actually, the first tutorial ever uploaded on this channel, I was cutting on a cutting board because I didn't even have a cutting mat yet. But I do think, you know, one of these is, is worth the price. When it comes to making your foam look like things, giving it texture, giving it life, you don't need a lot. A simple wire brass brush for wood grain. You can get these for very cheap in packs at the hardware store. Aluminum foil or aluminum foil for the Brits. I mean, just get a roll, steal it from the kitchen, crumple it up, crumple it up. There's your ball. You could substitute this with a rock. So this is essentially free. And a pencil, a sharp pencil. These Three simple items will be enough to do the vast majority of tasks for making these sort of things. There's texture rolling pins, there's hot wire engravers, there's all these other things, but these still to this day for me do 90%, if not more of my texturing work. And the value here is what? Once you got your pieces all cut up for whatever project you're working on, you're gonna need to glue them together. A small pointy tipped hot glue gun is gonna get you really, really far. And you can get these really cheap ones on Amazon for just a couple dollars. They're fantastic. They have an on and off switch. Generally, they're like under $10 on there. You can spend a couple bucks more. Get one of the like Sherbonder ones that I use, which has the advantage of being dual temperature so that you can use both high temp and low temp glue in different scenarios, which is very handy if you're only getting one shoot for a low temperature glue gun. That's gonna do the vast majority of the task that you wanna do building terrain. You can even buy these small mini cheap hot glue guns at craft stores, dollar stores, Walmart kind of stores for, I've seen them often for under $5. So it's a really, really cheap investment. General PVA glue, Elmer's glue wall is gonna do a lot of work for you. It's handy, you wanna have it around all the time. Avoid Elmer's school glue because it is diluted to a point where it's not really great. The uh, glue wall is a little bit stronger and gonna work a lot better. The problem with this is that sometimes it takes a little bit too long to set up, especially if you're gluing a bunch of little shingles or something like that, bricks and you're gonna to wanna to look at uh, tacky glue, which is essentially just very, very thick PVA glue. It has less water in it, which means it bites and holds things very quickly. It is worth spending the couple extra dollars on one of these containers here. And of course, Mod Podge, probably the item most synonymous with this channel. The short story is that it's a PVA-based glue that also contains other additives like varnish uh, that makes things not water-soluble and it doesn't shrink as much. So I use it to apply it to all of my, whoop. I use it to apply it to all of my foam creations to kind of lock everything in, make them a little bit harder. Unlike PVA glue, it doesn't shrink very much and it won't rehydrate when I put on washes and stuff like that. I like to add black paint on mine so that it acts as a base coat and I can see what I'm doing. That's explained in more detail in my basics playlist, which includes a Mod Podge video. But that's basically all you need for adhesives. After that, you're gonna need to paint your creations. Cheap 
packs of basically disposable brushes. I have used many times the big packs from the dollar store. You get like some ridiculous amount of garbage brushes for like a couple bucks, but they're full of decent brushes for this purpose. You can also get these big packs on Amazon for really, really cheap. You can get them at stores like Michael's, like Walmart. Never buy good brushes for terrain making, never. And for paint, cheap acrylic craft paint. Apple Barrel is what I mostly use. It's probably the cheapest brand on the market. It can often be found at Walmart for 50 cents a bottle. This is the amount of paint that is more than enough for you to make terrain. And actually some of this you don't even need. You want a flat black, dark gray, light gray. You could really just have one of them and lighten it up yourself, but for convenience sake, a beige, a tan ivory off-white, something like that, a generic dark brown, generic dark green, and a couple metallics, gold, brass, gunmetal. That's all you really need for most terrain, buildings, dungeon tiles, all that. You're gonna use these colors almost all the time. You can, you know, prop up your collection with some other basic colors, reds, yellow, blue, aqua, teal, whatever. You know, under $10 worth of paint is really all you need to get going. XPS insulation foam. If you live in any parts of the world that carry this at the hardware store, Home Depot, it's very, very affordable. For a half inch sheet, two foot by eight foot, I pay, it's like under $10 Canadian. It's very, very cheap. And you know, that was another thing that bothered me about that box that I saw is that they included XPS foam, which was kind of justifying the cost, but man, like it was like a couple dollars of foam. I know this can be difficult to get in some regions, but even if you can't get it at the hardware store and you have to buy it online on eBay from a reseller, while those prices are kind of a gouge and higher than they should be, it's still a better option than buying a kit that has a couple pieces that won't last you very long for a really inflated price. So XPS foam, buy one sheet of this, you know, maybe a sheet of half inch, a sheet of inch and a half for different tasks, and you're good to go. You can also utilize things like styrofoam plates, disposable plates, meat packing trays, egg cartons, anything like that that is already thin XPS foam if all you're working with is knives. There's a lot of ways you can get XPS foam without actually buying it and breaking it down with a hot wire. Foam core. I use two different kinds of foam core from two different dollar stores. And I've talked about this so many times, I'll just mention it briefly. Dollar Tree sells a brand called Ready Board, which is here. And it's a thin layer of XPS foam with paper on both sides, but the paper is really easy to peel off, giving you instant access to thin material. And that's fantastic. I also, on a lot of projects, like the paper to stay on for durability. So I'll buy this other foam core, and this is from Dollarama here in Canada. The paper does not peel off, which makes it more secure for building. It's also black, which is nice. It doesn't really matter. They're essentially the same product. One is easy peel, one is not. Get what you can get. If you can't get easy peel, you can use the other stuff and just soak it in water usually to peel it off. Sometimes a heat gun takes it off. Sometimes a hair dryer, alcohol. There's ways around it. Another fantastic material is medium weight chipboard. This is just very dense cardboard paper just think like very thick cardstock matte board like you use in picture frames not always the easiest to find personally I have to buy it on Amazon because I've never found it in packs locally here you can do so much with this saying that I forgot to pull out also just generic construction paper the stuff that kids use for crafting this can be cut up and to make all sorts of cladding and strips and you'd be surprised how much you can make with this heck I used it to make wood posts for a dock just last week. Cardboard is an excellent uh, structure. I actually used it on this house that I built only with these basic tools. It's a cardboard frame with dollar store foam and cereal box probably, pizza box something, shingles. Very, very simple, all done with these basic tools. There is a tutorial just on this exact build that you can check out if you wanna see how I did it. And that's it. You really don't need a lot to get started on this. Obviously, there's a lot more things you can buy to expand on your hobby. Most of those things will simply make your workflow more efficient, 
maybe make it turn out a little bit better, and in some cases allow you to do certain things that you can't do with these limited tools, but they're just icing on the cake. Like I said, this is all you need to start and do the vast majority of this hobby, and it's all I started with, and it's all I started with when I was even making my earliest video so it it's, it's all it's all you really need not a very elaborate list but that's the truth i'm going to make a list of these items it's in the video description i am also going to put links to this stuff uh, where i can on Amazon, those will be affiliate links. You can purchase that way if you'd like. It might not be the best way to get some of these items. Like I said, a lot of them, you're gonna you know, be better off buying it at the dollar store. But for convenience sake, if you can't get it where you live, maybe Amazon is the best place. Either way, that list is there so you can use it and build off it. If you want to build off that further and get into some of the more interesting, you know, tools and other cool stuff that you can use for this hobby, my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca does have all the other kind of stuff that I use regularly. You can check that stuff out too, see which add-on neat things might be right for you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. And let me know in the comment section if there is something that I somehow neglected to include that you think is an absolute must for a day one purchase to start this hobby. Put it in the comment section for people to see because yeah, maybe I forgot something. I don't think so though. I'm confident this is, this is a good list. These videos are by and large made possible by the generous support of people on Patreon. So if you like these videos, if you get a lot of value out of them and you want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. It gives you early access to videos, the Facebook group, the Discord server. It's a lot easier to ask me questions directly if you have them that way. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Hopefully this video is a great thing to link to when people ask, what do you need to get started? Thanks for watching guys, cheers. I will see you again in a couple weeks. I'm shutting down, taking a little break to enjoy the holidays with my little family. I hope that you can do the same. I'll see you in the new year. Cheers. Happy crafting.